Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. That's right. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the most high God. Take two. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, but given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand if we do not obey him, it is made manifest and made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, and to the saints that are watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they may live. I got no toothbrush, though. Let's open up to John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. He says, search the scriptures, because in them, you think you're going to find eternal life in there, right? But what is he saying? These are they that testify of me. He said, the whole time the scriptures are talking about me. This is Yahushua talking to us. So he said, the whole time is talking about Yahushua. Very important, because as we've gone over the last few weeks, we've looked, excuse me, we've looked at different, uh, different people that the Bible records, the different people in history that the Bible records, and we looked at how their lives testified of Yahushua, right? So now we want to continue on with that. We talked a lot about Isaac last week. Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob, and now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Jacob. We talked a little bit about Esau and Jacob last week as well, uh, but uh, now we're going to talk a little bit more about Jacob. Um, so let's go to Genesis chapter 28. We're just going to shoot through this. It's Genesis chapter 28, verse 1. It's Genesis chapter 28, verse 1. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said, You shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Mm -hmm. Arise and go to Padan Aram. To the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take thee a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. All right. So she, he, what he's telling pretty much is, you're going to get a daughter of our people. All right. You get somebody like us. You know, they don't mess with these people that's around here, the Canaanites. All right. We are surrounded by Canaanites at that point. He's like, don't mess with none of these people around here. I want you to get somebody from our people. So he gave him instructions on how to do that. Keep going. And God Almighty bless thee. And make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that you may be a multi multitude of a people of people. Uh huh. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to, and give the and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein you are a stranger, right? which so, God gave unto Abraham. So last week we talked about the birthright. Remember, he he gave up his birthright for some food. So Esau. Had, a, heard, had the birthright, him being the eldest. But he gave up the birthright for food because he was hungry. So he didn't care nothing about the birthright. So that's why at this point, remember, Jacob stole the blessing of Esau. And a lot of people will mistake that as, well, that's the blessing that Abraham had. But no, not necessarily. The great blessing that Abraham passed down goes to the son with the birthright. So he already had his birthright from from Esau selling it to him. So then once he has the birthright, now he gets the blessing of Abraham. Just like you had Ishmael, who was Abraham's first son. And then later on, you have Isaac. Isaac got the birthright after Ishmael was banished. So now the blessing went to Isaac. Then Isaac passed that along to his sons. It would have gone to Esau, but Esau sold it to Jacob. So then the birthright goes to, to Jacob. So now he gets the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham, remember, is one that the Messiah would come out of. So that's what we look at. That's very important. Keep going. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Mm -hmm. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take him a wife from there, 
and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, You shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and was gone to pay in Aram. And Esau, seeing that the daughter of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael, and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Neboeth, to be his wife. All right, so you see, you see Esau, when he saw that Jacob got a wife from, from his own people, he was like, oh. So he went, he went and grabbed him a wife. And he went to Ishmael, right? Because he's he his own people too. So he went to Ishmael, you know what I'm saying? Grandpapa Ishmael, you know what I'm saying? He went to him, he was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Let me, uh, let me get one of your daughters, right? So it's important, it's important that we kind of see his scheme. But really, you have to think about it. Before that, go, go to uh, Genesis 26. This is Genesis 26, verse 34. All the way at the end there. So Esau, we saw, he spotted Jacob. And he is like, all right, I need to get the right type of wife, right? But watch, this is what happened before. This is uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 34. And Esau was 40 years old when he took, the wife, took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite. The Hittite. The daughter of Elon, the Hittite. All right? So these were Hittites. Right, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and Rebekah. Right, these were Hittites. Hittites are Canaanites. Right, so remember, that's what that's what Isaac just told Jacob. Don't get none of these Canaanites. So that's why Esau was feeling like, oh, let me give me a different wife. Right, because he already had wives from Hittites. He had them from the Canaanites. So that's what he had already done. Right, and and there's no reason for us to assume that he didn't know that his mother and father wouldn't be pleased. You can see right there, it said that they were grieved by this, right? So there's no reason to believe that he didn't know what they, because, I mean, this goes all the way back. This is not something that, that Isaac just came out with. We didn't talk about it, but Isaac got a wife because Abraham. So let, let's go ahead and grab it. This is uh, Genesis chapter 24, right? It goes all the way back. Abraham didn't want Isaac to have a wife from the Canaanites either. It's Genesis chapter 24. We don't have to read it all. Just jump down to like 34. Because it's like uh, on this one, like he kind of repeat the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like he, it tells you the story about what actually happened. And then, and then the servant ends up repeating and telling the whole story again. Um, so we'll just go to where he retold the story. This is uh, Genesis chapter uh, 24, about uh, verse 34. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him has he given all that he has. And my master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife to my son to the, of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land. But you shall go unto my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee to prosper thy way, and you shall take a wife for my son, and of my kindred, and of my father's house. All right, so Abraham was like, I want you to get you a woman, or get, get my son a woman from my father's house. Right, somebody that's from my people. Right? So he said, go ahead and send them. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and send them out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go, go. And then he, he is, the servant was actually a little nervous, but he was like, okay, but what if a woman don't follow me back, though? He was like, no, no, no. The most high God is going to send the an angel before your way, and you're going to get you a woman for my son. All right? But watch what he say to him next. Then shall you be clear from this, from this my oath when you come to my kindred. And if they give not thee one, you shall be clear from my oath. Right? So he said, if they say no, then you, you, you innocent. You did what you were supposed to do. Right? It ain't your fault. Keep going. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now you do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water. And it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink both drink thou, and I will also draw for your camels. Let the same be the woman whom Yahuwah has appointed out for my master's son. Right? So what he said, he said, man, I'm just going to sit by this well. And then the first time a woman come by, I'm just going to ask, hey, can I have something to drink? And then the one that tells me, oh, yeah, absolutely. And then also let me get you some, some water for your camel. 
He said, that's how I'm going to know that's the one. So he's praying to God, kind of making a deal. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let this, let this happen if she's the one is what he's asking God for. He's just trying to get this thing over with. So let's see what happens. Before I had done, had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebecca came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder. Uh-huh. And she went down into the well, drew water, and I said to her, let me drink, I pray thee. Uh -huh. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from the sh her shoulder and said, drink, and I will give your camel's drink also. So right. I drank and she made the camel's drink also. Right, so she did exactly what he had prayed to God for. So let's see what happens. And I asked her and said, whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. Uh huh. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. Uh -huh. And I bowed down my head and worshipped Yahuwah and blessed Yahuwah, God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. All right. So now he see he feels that he identified her. He gave her jewels. Right. He gave her gifts and gave her jewels. Watch this. And now if you will deal kindly and truly with my master. Tell me, and if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Right? Had she not had she not given him the water in the way that he expected. She wouldn't have got those jewels. It was only because she lined up with the agreement that he had with the Most High God. So she got the jewels. He feels like this is the one. Now he has to meet the family and make sure that he get the okay. Keep going. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, answered and said, the thing proceeds from Yahuwah. We cannot speak unto you bad or good. Right? So they was looking at it like, what you saying come from God. They believed it, right? They were like, man, that thing got to come from God. It's like, you gave her all these jewels, you know what I'm saying? What are we going to say? You know what I'm saying? We can't say nothing good or bad about it, right? Remember that phrase, because Laban going to use that again. He's like, you know what I'm saying? We can't say nothing good or bad about it, right? Let's keep going. Behold, Rebecca is before you. Take her and go. Let her be your master's wife, as Yahuwah has spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped Yahuwah bowing himself to the earth. Mm -hmm. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her, brother, to her mother precious things. Mm -hmm. And they did eat and drink, he and the man that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning and he said, send me away unto my master. All right? So you look at it, everybody got gifts, everybody got cashed out, everybody was happy. He went there, he had to find a wife for uh, for Isaac within the land of his people. Couldn't get a Canaanite. So Abraham set it up for his servant to go through, go travel all the way to Paden Aram and find this wife for him and then bring her back. So that's how Isaac ended up getting married. So you can see the concept of marrying within the people was not something that Esau wouldn't have been aware of. Right? That's something that his mom was passionate about. That's something that his pop was passionate about. And when he did something other, it grieved him, the book said. Right? But we look at it, we see the servant, right? He's getting the wife for the son, right? At the order of the father. Even that testifies of Yahushua, right? He goes and he tried to speak. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to set it up, right? That's what the apostles do, right? If you get a, get, grab a 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He is waiting for a virgin to come to the well. All right, as soon as he saw the virgin, he's like, okay, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just let her... Uh, let her ask me, you know what I'm saying? Let me ask her if it's something to drink, and you know what I'm saying? Let her offer to drink, you know, get some drinks of my uh, camels also. When that all lined up, he said, this is it. I'm going to take you to my master's son. Once I take you to the son, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you to the son as a virgin. Matter of fact, as a chaste virgin. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Would to God you could bear with me in a little folly, and indeed bear with me. Mm -hmm. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to the Messiah. As a chaste virgin. That's exactly, exactly what the servant was doing, is exactly what the apostles are doing. They're trying to present us to Yahushua, right? As a chaste virgin, right? 
they're going and they're putting us in situations. They're praying, let these people line up with the agreement that we have with you. And once we line up, they present us to the most high God. All right? But watch what our problem is. Paul, tell her. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, mm -hmm. so your mind should be corrupted from the subtility that is in the Messiah. Uh-huh. For if he that comes preaches another Yahushua whom you have not preached, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, uh -huh. you might well bear with him. Right? He said you might well bear, you might well bear with that stuff. If somebody come talking about some different stuff, you might well bear with it. Right? If somebody come telling you something wild, you might, you might offer them some water. You might just give them, they camel some water. He said the right person come along, you ain't going to do it. Right? You're not going to do it. So that's what he's trying to let us know. He's trying to present us to the Messiah as a chaste virgin. That's no different from what the servant did. Servant was looking like, well, the father told me I need to go ahead and get a wife for the son. Right? And so the apostles act in that same way. It testifies to the story of Yahushua still. Right? Even if you look at it from the, uh, the aspect of John the Baptist. John the Baptist did the same thing. John the Baptist came by and he was a witness. Right? That's what, that's what, um, that's what uh, the servant had to do. After, after he came, he had to bear witness and legend. I'm not, I'm not the husband. I'm not trying to marry her. I'm trying to take her to the son. Right? John the Baptist did the same. Grab a uh, uh, John 1. John 1. We can start at verse 6. We're going to start talking about John the Baptist. You ain't nothing but a hound. That's how you walk. Legs as strong as I've ever seen. Back <laughs> crooked as a question mark. <laughs> There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Uh huh. The this is John the Baptist here. Watch this. He said he came for a what? Witness to bear witness. The book had to make it clear. Like, he wasn't the one? That's crazy. He was the one trying to introduce people to Yahushua. He had to introduce the wife to the husband. That was John's job. I mean, I'm just a witness. Keep reading. Watch this. Light that all men through him might believe. Uh huh. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Right. That was the true light, which lights every man that comes. Mm -hmm. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Mm -hmm. But as many as received him to give to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Mm -hmm. God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And he beheld his glory as uh, the glory of God the Father. Full mm -hmm. of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Watch this. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received the grace of grace. Right? So that's what. The servant did. When the servant got down and he, he found the woman and he finally met her family, that's what he was saying. He was talking about, listen, look, I have a master. And I came from my master to introduce her to my son, I'm sorry, his son. That's it, right? To the son. That's what it's all about. He's introducing the wife or the potential wife to the son, right? Keep going. So the law was given by Moses came by Yahushua the Messiah. No man has seen God at any time. The only God and Son which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests to Watch the record. I mean, when the Jews sent priests and the Levites to go talk to John, because they were like, man, John doing some wild stuff over there. Well, they sent them to go talk to him. Let's see what John said. Who are you? They asked, who are you? Let's see if John lied about it. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. He said very clearly, I'm not the Messiah. I'm yeah. not here. I'm just trying to introduce you to him. Watch this. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you that prophet? And he answered, no. Then said they unto him, who are you? That we may give the answer to them that sent us. Mm -hmm. What sayest thou of yourself? Uh-huh. 
He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Yahuwah, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were, which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if you be not the Messiah, nor Elijah, neither that prophet? Watch what he said. And John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. I one among you whom you know not. He it is who, come, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy. Done in Beth, Bethbara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Yahushua coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. He said, Look at it. The Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Right? That's the husband. The husband takes away the sins of the world. Right? Matter of fact, if you look at it, a husband, the book, according to the book, a husband takes away a woman's reproach. That's how the women always looked at it. That a husband would take away her reproach. There's a prophecy that we have. Go to Isaiah 4. Isaiah 4, verse 1. All this stuff is testifying to the son. It's Isaiah 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Saying, so watch what he say. In that day, it's going to be seven women, and they're going to take hold of one man. And what they going to say? We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name. For what reason? To take away our reproach. They said, I'm willing to share you with six other women just if you let me take your name to take away my reproach. If you marry me and take away my reproach. Right? That's why it makes sense that y'all was it. When he saw him, he said, look, there go the lamb. That's the one that's going to take away y'all reproach. He's going to take away the sins of the world. All right? Because he's the husband. He's like, look, world, let me introduce you to the husband. That's John's job. That's the apostle's job. All right? All our job is to maintain ourselves as chaste virgins. To make sure that we obey what the Most High God is pleased with. If we live a life that's pleasing to the Most High God, then the servants of God can introduce us to the Most High God himself. Right? What do you think would happen if, if Rebecca would have walked up and she said, you know what I'm saying, he said, I'm thirsty, and she was like, I ain't got time for that, and just kept it pushing. That would have been it. She would have never been introduced to the son. Right? But by living a life that was <laughs> pleasing to Abraham, to pleasing to the servant, Right? Pleasing to the most high God, that caused her <coughs> to meet the son. Right? That's the same thing that we have to do. That's the mindset that we have to be in. We have to be in, in a mindset that, that's always pleasing to the most high God. This is John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse Then comes he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. All right. So now we're talking about Jacob giving his son to Joseph. I mean, his, uh, that piece of land to Joseph. We'll read about, you know what I'm saying, Joseph a little later. But we'll see how Yahushua deals. Watch this. Now Jacob's well was there. Jacob's well was there. Remember, we're reading about Jacob. Jacob's well was right here where Yahushua is. And watch what happens at this well. And Yahushua, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Right? So he sat thus on the well. He sat down on the well, and it was the sixth hour. In other words, that's, that's the middle of the day. Right? It's hot. So he sat down there, and then what else? There comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahushua what do you know? He sat down at the well, and all of a sudden, a woman comes. All right, let's see. What happens next? And Yahushua said unto her, give me to drink. What do you think he was saying? I'm thirsty. 
Just like the servant said. Right? So y'all, she was like, huh, give me something to drink. Watch what this woman says. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which is a woman of Samaria? What do you think would have happened if Rebecca would have said that? She had never been married to Isaac. All right? She asked the wrong question. She should have just been like, you know what? Here you go. Watch what Yahushua will say to her. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. And Yahushua answered and said unto her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is, and who it is that said to you, Give me to drink, then you would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Mm -hmm. From where then have you that living water? Uh huh. Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Uh huh. And Yahshua answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him in a well of water springing up into everlasting life. All right? Keep going. Yep. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come here to, to draw. All right? So she's looking like, I want this water that you're talking about. And Yahushua said right? unto so her. No, you ain't got to keep going. So mm -hmm. Yahushua, he's in a position. He puts himself in the same position that the servant was in. He waits for this woman to go. He's trying to show you this story that y'all read was talking about me. All right? The whole thing was talking about him. Everything that we read is testifying to him. All right? She comes down and she tries to get a little bit of water. All right? But she doesn't even understand what's going on. She doesn't understand that just by giving him the water, he could have gave her water that never, never needs to be replenished, never runs out. All right? That's the difference between what happens here and what happens in, 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 the, in the shell of the stories that we look at. All right, we look at, we look at the servant, we look at Abraham, we look at Isaac, and we try, to, we, try to, uh, we try to read those stories. But when you look at it in the, from the scope of Yahushua, it's bigger and it's always going to be better. All right? The water that he offers and the gifts that he offers, it's not going to be gold and, 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 and jewelry. Right? He's offering us life and life eternal. All right, it's important that we understand that. It's important that we, we're cognizant of the things that please God and the way that we treat a man of God and a woman of God. All right, otherwise, we'll find ourselves. That's why Yahushua, uh, it, uh, Matthew chapter 25. That's why Yahushua, he was trying to explain to the people. He's like, what you do for the least of these, my brethren, you've done to me. Right, it's a reason why he said that. People are how you thinking that, you know, you talking about just a random crackhead or or just some random bum and this, that, and other. And not saying that, you know what I'm saying, what a lot of people consider a bum can't be a servant of the most high God. Um, but just saying it's not it's not a random person. He's talking about somebody who serves him, who happens to be in a lower position or in a in a in a needful position. All right, this is uh Matthew chapter twenty five. Give me verse uh give me verse thirty one. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. This is Yahushua talking. And all the angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Mm -hmm. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Mm -hmm. And shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. For I was a hunger, and ye gave me meat. He said, I was a hunger. And guess what they gave him? What up? And I, was, and I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. That's why he said at the well. He said, right there at the well, he said, I thirst. All right? I thirst. And you start asking questions. All right? He's telling you, I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. What else? I was a stranger, and you took in. He said, I was a stranger, and you ended up taking me in. Naked, and you clothed me. Mm -hmm. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger? Right? Thee? So the righteous who got chosen by the Most High God, they had a question. It's like, I don't remember ever seeing you. 
Right? You said we saw him. Lord, when did we ever see you? Watch what he said. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in. Oh, wait. Then shall the righteous answer, answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave ye drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took you in, uh -huh. or naked and clothed you? Mm -hmm. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Uh -huh. The king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in so much as ye have done it unto one of the least my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Notice what he said, the least of these my brethren. Right? This is not talking about a random crackhead, not talking about no no just person that, you know what I'm saying, that you just see. This is talking about my brother, and he already told you. Those who hear the will of the Father and do it are my brother, my sister, my mother. Right? So it's very clear who he's talking about. The people who seek the will of the Father. That's it. Right? When you see a person in that 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 classification. All right, and they in a needful position, then that's the person that they say, I thirst, give them water. Because what you do at that point, you're giving it to Yahushua. Right? That's how he sees it. He said, You're feeding my body. All of us make up his body. Right? So by doing that, we, by, by leaning on one another and providing for one another and sacrificing for one another, that puts us in the position of, of sacrificing for Yahushua. That's what he wants from us, that's what he expects from us. Right? A lot of times we've been. We've been conditioned to believe the opposite of what we're supposed to. So they have us spending our money feeling bad for just random crackhead people. While at the same time, we're looking at our brother and sister that's rocking and biking right here in the world with us. And we kind of just kind of shun them off. Right? Be like, ah, oh, this, that, and other. And we chasing, we chasing crackheads. Every crackhead I see, I just want to, you know what I'm saying, let me give you some money, brother. You know what I'm saying? I run into, you know what I'm saying, what they going to do is go buy a beer with it. I ain't saying you can't, and it's wrong. I ain't saying it's wrong to give them no money. I'm just saying that shouldn't be our focus. Our focus should be the people that's around us, right? People that's around us, if they in need, you help them, right? They ask, you got it, you give it. That's it, right? It's important that we, we have that, that mindset for one another that will that we'll sacrifice for one another because that's the heart of a person that will make it into the kingdom, right? A lot of these people just tell us, you know, they come up with all these myths, just come as you are and, and all this different stuff, but that's not how it is. That's not, that's not, if you come... The, the, we just we just we just read. He said, "I was naked and you clothed." Me. How you gonna come as you are if he if you had to clothe the naked person? How you gonna want you to come as you, come as you are? Even Jacob knew that. Genesis thirty five. This is Genesis chapter thirty five. If you can come as you are, if he is naked, why it matter? Just come just like you are. I'm saying naked and all, just come on here. That's how these Christians are having because they sick. Mind is backwards. Everything the most high God tells us, they find a way to twist it and make it and make it rebellious towards God. Right? It's important that we 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 decompress from that stuff and then we're able to, to bring our minds to a perfect truth and to the simplicity of the Messiah. Alright, this is Genesis chapter 35, verse 1. Let's see if Jacob agrees. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel. And dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appears unto thee when you fled from the face, fled from the face of Esau your brother. All right. So we haven't talked about it, but Esau and Jacob started to to have a little bit of. Well, Esau started to be bitter towards him. You know what I'm saying? Just based off all the stuff that he felt Jacob did to him throughout life, he started to be a little bitter towards him, which made Jacob scared. He ran. So. This is what it's talking about here. This is kind of, we kind of jumped ahead a bit, and we'll go back and try to catch it up. But just let's keep reading. Let's see if we can get to this point. Then Jacob said to his household and to all that, put away their strange gods. He said, put away your strange gods. That are among you, and be clean and change your garments. He said, be clean and do what? Change your garments. Change your clothes. Right? He told you, change your clothes. He said, be clean and change your clothes. What else? And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Uh huh. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings and were in their, that were in their ears. And they gave up their earrings. Right? You will see, as we keep reading and we get into the law, anytime our people was rebellious, he took those things away from us. 
He took our jewelry from us. That's why I don't wear jewelry now. Right? Whenever we were rebellious, he took our jewelry from us. Right? When we gave, when all the people gave up their earrings to make the golden calf. Right? When he came back down, he said everybody had to take out their earrings in our law. Right? In Isaiah, he says the same thing. I forget where, maybe Isaiah 2, maybe 3. He said the same thing. He said, I took away their jingling things, I think is what it say. Right? So that's when, whenever we get rebellious, that's what he does. He strips us of all the things that we have our glory and our pride in. Right? To bring us to a humble state. We got to change our clothes. Ain't no come as you are. That's not what the most high guy is. not no feed a, feed a crack, crack head and you say That's crazy. Serve the most high God and, and support the people that serve the most high God. Put your focus and your efforts towards the people that serve the most high God. Or that seek it. You know, to help create a person that serves the most high God. By the will of God. All right? Keep going. And they gave to Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the oak which is by Shechem. Mm -hmm. And they journeyed and they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities were around about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So that's, a, that's, that's what the most, high, <coughs> excuse me, the most high God decided to protect them after that. Because that was the agreement. <coughs> excuse me. That was the agree That very spot. If you read the, I think, the first or second verse, it say that they went to Bethel, right? And he built an altar there. That very spot, if we go, so we started off in Genesis 28. So let's go back to Genesis 28 and let's pick up nine so we can get to, we can learn more about Bethel and how that started. <coughs> this is Genesis 28. I think we left off around nine. Then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, and the sister of Neboeth, to be his wife. Mm -hmm. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Mm -hmm. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land where you, li where you lie to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Uh -huh. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. Mm -hmm. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you and will keep you in all places where you go and will bring you again to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said, surely this is in this, this, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this, is this place? This is none other but the house of God. And right? this is the gate of heaven. So he called it the house of God. That's how it, that's how you would say uh, Bethel, right? So in Hebrew, it was Bethel, right? So he said, this is the house of God. Watch this. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. Mm -hmm. Is it? Hold on, wait. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he put it for his pillows and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil upon top of it. Mm -hmm. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. Mm -hmm. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God be with me, and will keep me in this way. So watch the go, vow. This is the, this is the vow. He's making an agreement to a vow. He said, If God be with me, and keep me in this way. What else? And I will give, and will give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on. Just give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on, right? Our law tells us man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the Most High's mouth, right? What else? So that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God, right? He said the Most High God can be my God, 
as long as he keep me in this way, he provides me bread to eat, and he provides me rain, or in other words, clothes. You know what I'm saying? Just keep me in this way. Give me bread, give me some clothes. You know what I'm saying? Let me return to my father's house. We'll be out. Right? you will be my God. That's the value. That's what it always is going to come down to. Did God give us clothes? Did he give us bread to eat? He told us the word is what feed us. Right? When it comes to clothes, you got to pick up Isaiah. You got to see Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61.10. That's when we, when we read out our uh, Revelation, that's what it was talking about. It said the people with strange clothes he wouldn't, we talked about the white robes, right? You had to have you had to have a white garment. He said he went through the wine press. Y'all sure he went through the wine press. His stuff was all bloody, messed up. He said those who were with me, man, they were looking good. They stuff were white. Our, our stuff has to be white, right? Zephaniah told us anybody with strange clothes they ain't gonna get in, right? Y'all sure told us in this parable he found a man outside and he's like, man, what you wearing? You not wearing? Okay, and then he kicked them out there with gnashing the teeth. Right? It's important that our clothing is right. Did God give us clothes? Right? Keep going. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Uh huh. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has clothed. Garments of salvation. What else? He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As there's a, bride. a there's a robe of righteousness on this man. Keep going. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. There you go. The husband is gonna give jewels to the wife. That's how it go. That's what the son did. The servant ended up giving jewels. That was from the son. Right. The whole book has to testify him. The whole time we look at this, it has to testify him. Right? That's what we look at. We have to understand that all this has to tie back to Yahushua. That has to be our focus for everything that we do. It has to be the filter through everything that we look at everything, really. This is 1 Timothy chapter 6. I don't know why people do what they do. But no, that ain't what the book says. They don't compare what they do to this, huh? I don't know. They could have got it from a whole lot of places. I don't really know, though. I can't say. I can't say if that's where they got it from. There's nothing in the book that say anything about exchanging the ring, so I doubt it. Uh, they probably got it from some other tradition and thought it was all right. Continue to do it. Not say it's necessarily anything wrong with it, but I don't think it came from the book. It's 1 Timothy chapter 6. Uh, give me verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Uh huh. And they that have a believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, mm -hmm. but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the. These things teach and exhort. Mm hmm. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord, Yahushua the Messiah, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof come his envy, strife, railings, and evil sermons. That's right. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw yourself. And just running in darn mouth. Right? He's supposing that gain is godliness. We've seen these pastors. We've seen these preachers. We've seen this lead, these leaders. We talked about it last week. It's the folks that put it out there that you, you have this glorious life or you have this success that, 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 that people view as success at least. Right? And because you have that, that's godliness. You wouldn't have that unless God gave it to you. Right? So they suppose that gain is godliness, that it's godly for gain. God wants you to prosper, to be prosperous, to be successful, to be great. Right? But he said, from such, be friends with them. Withdraw yourself. He said, from, from them type of people, keep your butt away from them. 
But you see everything that we have clearly in the book. Somehow, we have somebody on TV or in our life that says they represent God, but they do the opposite of what the book is clearly telling us. And then when we say it, they tell us we crazy. And we've done something wrong. And we're not trusting God. And we making God out to be mean. But this is what the book, this is where, this is what God is setting us up for. He just wants to know, you know what you read now, right? You know what you saw. Do you trust what you read or do you trust what these people, how these people making you feel and what these people say to you? All right? And that's what it comes down to in everything that we all are trusting. Do we trust what we believe from God or do we trust what all these people are trying to make us do or make us feel or make us make us move and make us do and pressure and all this? That's constantly, that's all it is. Every day. It worked every single day. That's what I'm dealing with. You just have a bunch of people that have their own opinion, right? Their own view on life. And then the pressure of how they view their expectations of you, how you might make them feel, how they're going to make you feel. That could change, cause you to alter if you're not steadfast in what you're doing. At some point, you just got to say, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? what I believe. This is what I believe. You ought to come around to me or I'm going to come around to you. Right? Somebody going to break. We have to be able to stand up for God in a way and say, oh, not us. Somebody going to break. It ain't going to be us. All right? He said, from such, withdraw yourself. Keep going. But godliness with contentment is great gain. He said, but godliness with contentment. In other words, godliness, and you know what? I'm all right. If you say, I'm godly, in other words, I obey the most high God. Mm, and the way I feel about things, I mean, I ain't got it at all, but I'm all right. Right? And watch the two things that Paul is telling us we should have. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Uh-huh. And having food and raiment, let us be there with tent. Food and raiment. Where do you think Paul got that from? He got it from our father, Jacob. That's all Jacob was looking like. Listen, you keep me in this way, that's godliness. You give me some food, give me a little bit of rain, you know what I'm saying? We'll be all right. So Paul carried that same message. He's like, listen, a little bit of food and raiment, we'll be As long as we eat, as long as we cover, we can be content. That's godliness. You obey God and you have those two things. That's godliness. And we have to change our mind. We always want more and want to do more and get more and see more and all that. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with being rich. Nothing wrong with having a lot of money. That can't be our focus, though. Otherwise, our focus is taken away from somebody else. All right? Let's, finish. So let's go to John chapter 1. Quick work. John chapter 1, verse 49. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. So Yahushua answered and said unto him, Because I said unto you, I saw thee in the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. What are you going to see? And he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Right? That's exactly what we just read out of Genesis 28. That Jacob saw. He saw a ladder come down. He saw angels ascending and descending from the heavens. And he said, you know what? Surely this is the house of God. That's what Yahushua was just trying to tell. You're going to see greater things to this. You're going to see the house of God. It's important that we understand. We may, when we read that story, we may not have saw Yahushua. We may not have saw Yahushua in none of this when we first read it. Right? The whole thing is testifying, testifying to Yahweh, testifying. The whole thing is testifying to Yahushua. The whole thing is trying to let us see Yahushua in his fullness. All right? Every week, that's what we want to do. We want to try to understand what is the book trying to show us with Yahushua. All right? After we do that, then we know the man more clearly. Then when he gives us a commandment, it's more clear to us. We can obey it. And it's a catch-22 because if you don't obey it, you ain't going to see him. All right? That's the only way that we can try to get to it. Any questions? Let's pray out.